Right, we're ready. Are we ready? Uh, yes. Are we live? Yes. I think so. <laughs> Sarah, are we live? She can't hear us because I've switched Sarah off. Oh, Stephanie. Let me put Facebook on and ask people. Can I just are tell you that this has been going on for like <laughs> 45 minutes? What with me? This has been absolute chaos. Are we live? Two over 50s trying to sort out Facebook. One who doesn't do it and one who doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah's just emailed in to say, yes, we are live. Oh, God. <laughs> we are. <laughs> oh, God, sure. So you got that little bit of running commentary. Uh, so, so hilarious. Oh, my God. Hello, everybody. We have had oh. just the most traumatic time. It's honestly... We've got to stay apart. We're trying to work out how to do this. Mel and I are rubbish on Facebook between us. I don't even know whether you can hear us or not. Have we got the volume up? Uh, oh, bear with. Hang on. Hands so, going right across. Yeah, volume's on full, so we're so, all right. Okay, right. So, we're gonna try, we're, I'm going to do this demonstration. And <sighs> I'm, I hope you're there, but I don't know whether you are or you're not. So, we'll work this bit afterwards. And um, I was on a phone call. I come, I've been on TV this morning, gone crazy and craft. I'm sorry, I'm crying. Oh, I've got mascara running. Oh, dear. Never it's mind. Right. It's all right. Anyway, so, we, so I was on TV this morning with Nancy, and it was the last chance to get the kit that we've been working on. And then I, got, I had to go on to a phone call, and then I realised I was going to be late. So I rang Mel to say, I'm on my way back to the house. But, of course, we're living in different parts of the house. And, um, but do you know how to do the Facebook Live thing? And she said, yes, Sarah's told me everything. Well, then, after all this, after being on lots of different Facebook logins and websites and stuff, look, I've even still got my pass on, um, realised it says that my camera's not working. I don't know what that means. Um, so, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this card for you. Then we're hoping... Do people might send us messages now? I've no idea. I've never done this before. Okay. Um, this is the blind lady in the blind. <laughs> okay, so what we're hoping is you're going to put messages. Make them nice, please, because it's been a stressful morning. Can you, can you put messages for what you would like us to teach you? Because we are going to learn how to do this. In a few weeks' time, we will have completely nailed it, and we will then be able to do proper lessons to you, which is what we really want to do. So I've grabbed some stuff that I wanted to prep. And the other thing that I did want to share with you is after this um, video, I'm going to take pictures of these three cards that I've got here. And I'm actually going to do them as a giveaway online. Oops, that one's stuck. Something's happened to, oops, a bit of adhesive there. Sorry about that. Um, just take the leaves off. <laughs> God, Mel will never do this with me again. Oh, this well, just it's hilarious. The best friendship ever. <laughs> so, I'm going to put these three on and I'm going to pick three people to send them to. So, perhaps you'll forgive us then for what we've been through. You've been through. It's been quite traumatic, I have to say. So, what I've got here is um, I've got, uh, and this is interesting because I've grabbed a card and it wasn't one, it was one of the ones that was left over from the demonstrations because I was hoping I was going to have half an hour to prep it. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to get when I opened it up. But that's really good because it's a bit like doing ready, steady cook when you empty the bag of all the cooking things and you have to come up with a dinner. When you do this with craft, you've got to think on your feet, especially if you're on TV, think about what you're doing and then hopefully come up with something that you really like. So the first thing that I've got is a piece of card that's been folded to create a square card. And because that's come from a sheet of A4, it's not sufficient when you fold it over to get the complete A um, square card. So you then cut a separate piece from another piece of A4 and the two sit together. What's interesting is that it actually reinforces the card front or the card back. Now, I like that to be the back because then when you've got something that has got quite a lot of weight on it, the weight at the front can pull the whole card forward. But if the back's quite so well supported, it does hold it in place. So we wouldn't want this seam at the front. 
I would on inside I would then make it so that it goes at the back so I'm just going to fold that over and I've got a piece of pretty decorative paper here and on this occasion I'm going to pop that one inside and I'm going to fold this piece back so that we're creating the the look and feel of the inside of the card and we're getting to see that so I'm just going to make that score line and let's do a little bit of sticking i'm just going to reach some tape or some adhesive so this is as good as anything it's book binding glue dries really quickly you really don't need very much of it at all but what's nice it's got an incredibly fine nozzle i don't know whether mel can do close-ups so we won't worry about that but um, really, really fine nozzle. And then, and also the other thing I like about it is the glue doesn't drip. So I can squeeze it and you can see there's a bead of glue actually on the bottom of the nozzle, but that it doesn't drip onto your work. So that's even better. So let's put a little bit of this around all the edges, across the middle to get a little bit of um, catching. And then I sometimes just flick it in to the card so that you don't have that ridge or that line of cardstock. Book binding glue, it's not always necessary to do that, but it is a good idea with some of your other adhesives. So I'm lining up to the bottom, making sure that that's absolutely level because I know that those two pieces of card have been cut square. And then this is ready to go inside. So I'm gonna take off the back and a lot of you will be used to doing your mats and layers and Mel's going to get into that in a bit more detail. But it's also, if you are a beginner and you're not confident about lining things up, one of the things that I do is take just a piece of the tape around and then you can sort of, you can lay it over it and you can check it and move it and it doesn't stick. So you then hold it in the middle, make sure it doesn't move when you do do that hold it down and then we can just peel these out. So peel them from the sides. And once you've got two sides down, it's really easy to just do the others. So whoever comes up with some fantastic way of using this will be a real genius because it's, it's sort of waxy on both sides so it doesn't stick to anything. So it's quite hard and I haven't come up with a recycling use for that yet. So now I'm gonna fold this and what I've got is we've got this so we've got sort of like an open front on it so what I'm thinking would be quite nice to have a pocket that comes diagonally across that I could be tucking something into maybe something like a tag or even a little mini bouquet of flowers or I've just had another little idea which I quite like like the thought of so I'm going to just check in what I've got color wise here I'm going to take this piece and one of the reasons that we're using this non-stick sheet is because then when we're demoing, we can do them a little bit quicker and you don't always want to watch us just putting tape on. Although it is quite important to get used to what is the best kind of tape because you'll find that if you get the right tapes, it actually does make a difference, makes it much, much easier to work with. So I'm going to now, I've got, <coughs> this piece here and it's actually this I was going to design to put inside so I've just got like that little bit of edge of green coming out there but it has already got a piece of tape on the back now I want to get rid of that tape because I want to I don't want this to stick so I'm going to just put the carrier tape back on there um, actually that'll work so I've left a little bit sticky at the top and a little bit sticky at the bottom and now that's going to sit on my card you can see it's going over the edge so I'm just going to snip both of those I'm just going to lift that up and snip it so it's got a border so that's one end let's do the same at this end there take rid of both of those out and what I've just done is created a little pocket. And the reason I've done that is I was sitting here looking at these and thinking, imagine 
if I could send this as a card and this actually went inside the pocket. Now to maximise getting it in there, I'm just going to twist the table round. So I just need to lift that up and let that twist. And I'm going to suggest that when you get this collection home and you then make your design, so I'm just trying to see how we get the best of that in there. It still needs to come around a bit more. Um, when you get this home and you actually are making the designs up, put two of the tables together and stick them together because it's a little bit stronger and then it means it's really robust when you're actually moving it in and out. And because I've just changed the way that that was sitting in there, it actually tucks in quite nicely. So I've, act, I've created a little pocket to put my table in. Quite like the idea of that. Now, when I'm doing my cards, often the first idea that I come up with is not the one that I end up using. So with this, what would I change? Well, first of all, I would make it a five by seven. So a five, five inches wide, seven inches tall. So that would take in all of these flowers. So they would actually be part of the design. And also, let's change this one for a different table. I'd consider where I actually put the design of the flowers so that they are part of the actual card. So I can plan it so it becomes part of the card. And then I can add just a few pieces. These have actually come off the card that was um, made earlier. But you can put a few of these little pieces. And in fact, I've got a whole box of these. Oh, this would be another little giveaway, wouldn't it? Be great. I can include a load of these flowers in what I'm sending you. And so I could put my little flowers there and I've created a little pocket to put my table card in. I can then pull this out. So let's get those glued on, which will take just a second. And I do love this cup crafting sort of almost, um, well, we have the, this expression. It's not a good one. It's not one to be proud of, but we call it winging it. And you'll, you'll know sometimes when you see us on there and we're, we're sort of thinking on our feet as we go along. Um, so what I've done there is I've put, I've created that, but imagine now, so I've got, actually, that's a good idea. I'm gonna move those flowers and just see where else they're gonna go. I'm gonna tuck them down here because that will give me a better shape for my pocket. And I love this kind of crafting where you really are thinking on your feet. So that's a much better shape for me now because it all will fit in. So I've got my, my little table, I lift my card out, I open up my table. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? I'm glad we finally worked out how to do Facebook Live because it was a challenge, I can tell you. <laughs> Actually crying, laughing. Poor old Sarah, we get, we've given her such a hard time this morning and this afternoon. So I've now got my little table and my card together. I just, and it's so lovely just being, creating things literally as you go along. Right now, I've got some dental wipes and some wipes. We're gonna put the phone down for a second. Mel has got a very informative um, tutorial for you. So I'm going to Got the wipes. do this, take the wipes, and then I can take the phone. <laughs> if you could have seen the chaos behind this, it was absolutely hilarious. Stephanie was pressing like 100 buttons in a minute, I think, trying to find the right button, and I was no help whatsoever because, as you know, I don't not really do Facebook. So I'm going to pass so this over the to wobbles, everybody. The wobbles. Right. Okay, sorry, it said cancel. I didn't mean to press cancel, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> okay, right. It says wave, Mel. Hi. Okay. Does it mean, I think that means send a wave to the people out there, not me wave, literally. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Honestly, it's hilarious. Right. Right. So, so hang on, like me. I've got to work out how to get this stable. You do, you do your video and I'll video. work this right. bit out. So... I wanted to talk you through it a long time ago, many, many, many years ago now, I got the opportunity to go over to um, EK Success 
which were then part of the Wilton brand and are now part of the um, American Crafts brand. And we did a scrapbook course, and I've been teaching scrapbooking for quite a long time, but went in there and learned so much, it was just brilliant. One of the most important things when you're doing any paper craft project, whether it's scrapbooking, mixed media, whether it's card making, is matting and layering and bringing out that focal image. So that whether it's a scrapbook page and you're guiding the reader through that page, so you're dictating what they see first and what the most important bit is, or whether it's just taking a beautiful Kanban topper and matting and layering to bring out its true beauty. So I wanted to talk to you about matting and layering. So what I did this morning was I took this beautiful stamped image that is one of the, now let me think, um, Textures of Africa from Imagination Crafts that Mandy Taylor brought to you on, what do you want today? On Monday, I think. So I've stamped out six of these and I've tried to cut them down to more or less the same and I've used my cutter color trimmer to do that. They're not all exactly the same size, but they're not far off. See now, what's happening now is Stephanie's trying to multitask. <laughs> it's never a good idea. I want to get it so I'm not wobbly. I'm not wobbly. Is that better? Yeah, it's perfect now. Right, so I'm going to leave this one as it is. All right, and I've cut most of it ready so I can just glue it together and you can see the difference. So I'm going to put this one down here and then when we're finished, I'll get the phone back off Stephanie and I'll do an overhead shot so you can see them all side by side. So then I've got another one exactly the same, but we're going to do this on what we call a single mat. So this is where you take your piece of black card and I've cut this two mil bigger on each side. So let's say this was 140 by 130. I've done it at 144 by 134, which gives me two millimetres all the way around the outside edge. And that's what you would class as a narrow mat. So this is just making, lifting it off and black will make anything pop, especially because this is stamped in black. It will really bring the eye into that. So again, I'm going to use my book binding glue as well. Now bear with, because it's formed a little skin on the top. So I'm just going to use my, funnily enough, EK Success tweezers. I think they were on a show with uh, Miss Wheelie yesterday, so check those out on the website because they're fabulous. And I'm just going to lay this down now. Because I use a wet glue, what I do is I hold it, I bring the card towards me, so not like this, because then you can't see the top edge. So I bring it towards you, I've got my fingers underneath and my thumbs on top. And I put my fingers down so they touch the card, but then I can see the top and the left and the right. And I know as long as they're about two mil, the rest of it, it's going to then fit into place. And I like using a wet glue because it gives me a bit of wiggle room. So I've then got my first mat. So if I bring in the original one and I put those two side by side, you can see the difference immediately from this one that's just plain and this one that's got that first mat. So that's the first one. And it's really interesting. If you've got like a photograph and you photocopy it six times in black and white, do this with it and keep it because then you'll be able to take a topper or a photograph and lay it over the top and think which mat works best. So I've now got another one of those that I've already stuck down, but this time I've done, this is what we call a double mat, but this is a double proportionate mat. And that, what that means is that both layers, both mats and layers are the same width. So I've got a two millimeter border all the way around here and another two millimeter border of the white. All right, so I'm gonna stick that down. And this is when, and this really jumped out at me when, when my grandma passed away, she was 99 and she'd kept everything, like every newspaper clipping of the grandchildren, every newspaper clipping from the business that they ran, every Mother's Day card, every little um, card that she got on any bunch of flowers, she kept everything. And towards the end of her life, she had dementia, so she started moving stuff around. And when we cleared out her house, she had a porcelain cup and in the bottom was this little passport sized photograph. And I said to my dad, who's that? And he said, that was your grandma's brother who was killed in the Second World War. I didn't even know my grandma had a brother that was killed in the Second World War, but it was this big. But I wanted that to be a real focal point on a scrapbook page and tell that story of who it was, where I found it, when I found it, what it was in, all that sort of thing. So that that story then was never lost again for Matthew and my grandchildren. So I had other stuff that I wanted to go on the page, but because the photograph was so tiny, I needed to find a way of making that important. And this, the matting and layering, is how I did it. So that was it's really clever when you start to get into this. 
So now I've got another one here. So we've got our no mat, single mat, double mat. We're now going to stick this onto another one, which is a triple mat. And you might think, well, that's, is that really making much difference? It really does. It really, really, really brings the eye into that focal point. And it might be that you've got, you know, when you buy um, sets of toppers like card kits and you've always got little bits left over, this is a really good way of building that up to make it a focal point on your card. So I'm just gonna lay this one down now and I'm just gonna show you the difference between the double one and the triple one because this is when it really starts to come to life. So that's your double one, which looks great, but then look at the difference of your triple one. It really stands out. So if you had those two on a card front or on a scrapbook page, this one with the triple mat would stand out more. It's very clever. And it's little things like this. And the reason I wanted to do this, I've done it a couple of times in Caterpillar shows, but I've been listening. So rather than watching Crayon Craft, I've been listening to it because I've been busy getting on with the Christmas, 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 Cutting Craft Orion. But I've been listening to it. And the number of times we say, oh, I'm just going to mat and layer this, but we need to know what mat and layering is and how we use it and when we use it and why we use it. So that's what I wanted to do. Now, so those are, those are the main ones that you would do proportionately. So where all the... <laughs> I'm not drunk. That's just... <laughs> 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 